Assalamu alaikum. alaykum. Assalamu alaykum. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you so much for having me back again. I'm happy to see everybody again here another Ramadan. Uh, today we're looking at the 23rd juz, and I would just like to share some of my observations for this, the surahs that are in this juz. The first one is the rest of Yasin, which started before this. And the things that come to my mind that draw my attention are the verses that describe the natural world that evoke awe and wonder at God's creation as evidence of his existence. And we see over and over examples that could only be explained later on scientifically hundreds of years uh, after they were revealed. And these are some examples. And they have a sign in the sun. It runs an orbit of its own and is, that is laid down by the will of the Almighty, the All-Knowing. And in the moon, for which we have determined phases that it must traverse till it becomes like an old date stock, dried up and curved. Neither may the sun overtake the moon, nor can the night usurp the time of day, since all of them float through space in accordance with our laws. Next slide. And he it is who has created the heavens and earth in accordance with an inner truth, bilhaq. He causes the night to flow into the day and causes the day to flow into the night. And he has made the sun and the moon subservient to his laws, each running its course for a term set by him. Is not he the Almighty, the all-forgiving? To me, these verses about the alteration of night and day uh, fascinate me, and it, it basically reflects the, the reality that we know that the earth spins and rotates on an axis and revolves around the sun. Now mind you, the Quran was revealed in the seventh century, uh, and at that time the belief was that the sun and the stars revolved around the earth. In around 800 AD, two Muslim astronomers, Ibn Yunus and Ibn al-Shatir, made early discoveries, probably inspired by these verses of the Quran, that later enabled Copernicus in the 16th century to propose the heliocentric model, which is that the earth revolves around the sun, that we take for granted today. But you can see the early mention of this in the Quran is a truth that was eventually discovered by mankind. God also says here, um, and this is actually uh, in the following surah, thus it is that we have not created heaven and earth and all that is between them without meaning and purpose. The word is batilan. As is the surmise of those who are bent on denying the truth. But woe from the fire of hell unto all who are bent on denying the truth. So all of this creation is, is in truth and with meaning and purpose. Next slide. Um, but in addition to this evidence that God exists when we look at the natural world, I think what he is telling us here is that um, he makes the point that he can create life out of nothing. And if he can do that, then he can also raise the living from the dead on the day of judgment. So he says, is man not aware that it's we, it is we who create him out of a drop of sperm? Whereupon, lo, he shows himself endowed with the power to think and to argue. And now he argues about us and thinks of us in terms of comparison and is oblivious of how he himself was created. And so he says, who could give life to bones that have crumbled to dust? Say, he who brought them into being in the first instance will give them life once again, seeing that he has full knowledge of every act of creation. He who produces for you fire out of the green tree so that lo, you kindle your fires therewith. Next slide is then he who has created the heavens and the earth, not able to create anew the like of those who have died, yea, he, for he alone is the all-knowing creator. His being alone is such that when he wills a thing to be, he says unto it, kun fayakun, be and it is. Limitless then in his glory is he in whose hands rests the mighty dominion over all things. So this is the reflection on the creation of God is not only to show that God exists, having created that in the first place, but of w what he is capable of doing. Next slide. In the same theme of creation, as the first, the verse I read earlier that talks about man who was created out of a mere drop of sperm, then he talks about how he created you out of one living entity, min nafsin wahidatin, and out of it fashioned its mate. 
again, at the time, the Judeo-Christian perception was that God created Adam, and out of Adam he created Eve. But this verse and others in the Quran show that God created one soul, and out of it created another, and that the language is gender neutral, as you will uh, read among the commentators. Uh, <laughs> He creates you in your mother's wombs, one act of creation after another, in threefold depths of darkness, which sort of describes the protection of the fetus in the, in the, in the uterus, in the womb, in the amniotic sac. And he says, how can you lose sight of the truth? The, the, um, the <coughs> next surah, the Safat, Allah spends a lot of time, a lot of the time in the surah pointing to his servants. Uh, at, as those who will be rewarded and doers of good. Next slide. Um, he talks about Noah, Abraham, Lot, Moses, Aaron, Elijah, Jonah. But I just want to take a moment on this one so, uh, ayah that uh, reflects on the story of Abraham, who has gone through all of his stages of belief, dealing with his father. And then the day comes when the child that he had prayed for um, is to be sacrificed. And when the child had become old enough to share in his father's endeavors, the latter said, Oh, my dear son, I have seen in a dream that I should sacrifice you. Consider then what would be your view. And his son answered, Oh, my father, do as you were bidden. You will find me if God so wills among those who are patient in adversity. And this verse ends, or this little vignette was saying, Peace be upon Abraham. Thus do we reward the doers of good. But the point here is that he stopped and asked his son what he thought. Instead of just acting out on God's orders, he took this boy and said, what do you think? What is your opinion? And so this shows this mutual respect between father and son. And the son himself, being a righteous believer, said, do as you are told to do, and I will be among those who are patient. And then, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognizes their sacrifice. And, and, and substitutes in Ishmael's stead uh, a lamb, and which is what we emulate on the day of Eid and uh, uh, after the Hajj. Next slide. But despite all of these things, people continue to deny the truth, and as if they had always been wont to say, if only we had a tradition from our forebears, as if the Quran wasn't enough, as if the, the earlier messages weren't enough. They, they want something special just for them that comes from their own forefathers. We would certainly be true servants of God. And yet, when, when this divine writ has been placed before them, they refuse to acknowledge it as true. But in time, they will come to know what it was they had rejected. Next slide. And in these verses, in these surahs, the Prophet, peace be upon him, is once again advised that he is only there to warn. He cannot decide if people are going to believe. God says to him, say, I am only a warner, and there is no deity whatever save God, the one who holds absolute sway over all that exists, the sustainer of the heavens and the earth, uh, and all that is between them, al-Aziz al ghafar say this is a message tremendous this is a big deal how can you turn away from it and then later in the surah prophet says no reward whatever do i ask you for this and i am not one of those who claim to be what they are not so he is there to simply give the message issue a warning he gets no reward from the people but he is there in service of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala next slide the last few verses were ones that just stood out that i wanted to share especially this one I think we are all familiar with the verses with the notion of this idea of Islam, God's message, leading us out of darkness into light, right? We've heard that multiple times. And we also like to believe in the idea that this light comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and is spread throughout the world. And here's what he tells us when... Um, when he opens wide, when we open our chest wide to, 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 to be Muslim, so, أَفَمَنْ شَرَحَ اللَّهُ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ فَهُوَ عَلَى نُورٍ مَنْ رَبِّهِ So, he's saying, when, you, when you've opened yourself up, then, then to this submission to God, you are illumined by a light that flows from God. Uh, and so, this is just telling us that, and you see this in some of the people that we know who are the most devout believers, right? Who 
who have such strong faith in God that as if a light comes from them and that light then it can illumine the darkness of those around them. So this is a very special verse I think that tells us that we can be a conduit for the light of God. Next slide. Uh, finally, the last couple, again, the Quran itself, describing itself, these are always the most interesting verses, where it says, God bestows from on high the best of all teachings in the shape of a divine writ, fully consistent within itself. There are no contradictions. If, they, if we think there are, it's only because of our lack of understanding. Repeating each statement in manifold forms, whereat shiver the skins of all who of, who of their sustainers stand in awe, so that when we hear it, we get goosebumps, if you will, but in the end, their skins and their hearts do soften at the remembrance of the grace of God, such as God's guidance. And then it says again uh, in, the, uh, in the same surah, we have propounded all kinds of parables, so you might think as a discourse in the Arabic tongue, free of all deviousness. So this talks about the perfection of the Quran, the consistency of the Quran, that it is a unified whole. Next slide. Finally, I think this is a verse we should try to remember as we struggle to do what is good and right in this life. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is talking about uh, the believers. All that they ever yearned for awaits them with their sustainer. Such will be the reward of the doers of good. And to this end, God will efface from their record the worst that they ever did. So he will take for those believers and wipe out from our record the worst that we did and give them their reward in accordance with the best that they were doing in this life. So this is just a reflection of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that for those who are struggling, striving, doing our best to believe and to worship Him, that He will help us on the Day of Judgment by effacing the worst that we did, inshallah, and giving us our reward according to the best that we ever did. And that's something for us all to be hopeful for. So thank you again for inviting me back. And inshallah, you will have a very productive rest of, the Ram of Ramadan. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Dr. Marayati. Thank you for coming back, actually.